Hey everybody, welcome to yet another episode of For Honor Hero School, and today I have the Shield Basher class. I have Arpian with me, and Arpian is a longtime Conqueror player, and he said, hey, I'm going to show you how to be a Shield Basher. So, Arpian, thank you very much for joining me, taking your time for this video. No problem, it's always, uh, always looking to help people. I mean, if you look at the Conqueror, he looks like a badass. He does the first look thing. like a badass. Yeah, I mean, just I'm covered in spikes at the moment. <laughs> you are. You kind of have to unlock that, but it's good. But um, I've been playing the Conqueror now since the September tech test, so this is the fourth test that I've been in. Um, and I find he's been consistently underrated by basically everyone in the community. And I'm going to show you he's not weak. He's actually quite obscenely overpowered at the moment. And if this video gets enough traction, hopefully... They'll bring him into line with everyone else. Well, I'm sure you know you're already selling us with the with the get up with the spikes <laughs> and everything. So you think you can show us your moves? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Then let's jump right in. All right. So here we are, RPN, in the courtyard, and once again I face a man who is vastly superior with the class that I have chosen. So yeah, at this point, I mean, the probably the people watching and especially me are absolutely noobs at the conqueror we have no idea what he can do or what he can't do so could you basically show us his bread and butter basis for a little bit and you know show us what are the basics that he uses in the combat yeah sure um so one of the criticisms that you see about the conqueror quite a lot is that he has a very limited very basic sort of move set and for the most part that's completely correct um he has two chains, really, or three chains. One is the infinite chain. I think it's called Conscript Attrition, where as long as you alternate which side your light attacks are coming from, the chain will never end until you run out of stamina or you're blocked. Um, the light attacks themselves, they're, they're not the fastest in the game, but they're not the slowest, uh, and they do sort of mediocre damage. Um, but you can also chain at any point during that. You can stick in a heavy attack doesn't matter which side uh, and that will come out slightly faster than normal um, when you select the conqueror on the select screen you'll notice it says heavy hitter um, for the most part that's not actually true uh, his heavy attacks are actually I think the weakest in the game if you just use them oh wow um, you can chain them together by the way uh, but only two in a row um, yeah if somebody's on low HP and then they manage to avoid combat long enough to recover their health, you actually can't kill them with one heavy attack, which I think is unique in that aspect. I don't think any other class can't execute someone off at that point. Mm. Um, but uh, aside from his heavy and his light attacks, which those are basically his only two combos, um, you can shield bash, which will knock the enemy back. It's unblockable, it is dodgeable, uh, and you can chain that into a light attack or a heavy attack. The light attack damage, if they're in range, it's guaranteed. It's not oh. much damage, but, you know, considering the safe nature of the shield bash, it's not too unfair. Um, you can chain shield bashes and heavy attacks together, however, for a bit more damage. And just keep going, again, until you run out of stamina. It's another infinite combo. Um, the problem is, at no point during those chains can you... You can't faint attacks as the Conqueror. So if I throw out a heavy, that's it. The heavy's going. Mm. Um, there is one way around it, which I'll show you later in a sort of more advanced section. Right. But uh, for the most part, that is your bread and butter. The Conqueror can normally parry with his weapon, though. Like, the only thing that's different is that he can't faint. Yes, he can. All his other defensive actions, they're, they're just the same as everyone else. With, with a couple of caveats, which I'll tell you about later. But yeah, he can parry... Um, he can block everything else defensively, he's fine. Um, it does open up some weaknesses to him, or for him. Uh, but, I'll show you later, it it doesn't matter. Those <laughs> weaknesses, they don't matter. Um, one thing you'll see some players say is that the Conqueror can only guarantee a light attack off a guard break, and it's not true. You can 100% get a side heavy off of every guard break. Okay, so, now... The Conqueror doesn't just have this weird flail, which, you know, he can't faint with. He has a really big shield. Now, what can I do with that? Uh, well, primarily, you can use it to block attacks. That's kind of what it's for. 
Um, but the Conqueror and the Warlord both share one thing in common, and that is the full block, like that. So if you hit the uh, your Omni block button, I think it's right stick down on controllers. I use a keyboard, so it's the C button. Um, but that will block an attack from any direction. So if you you go into Omni block, whichever direction I attack from, it gets blocked automatically. Cannot stop it. So one thing you'll notice though, if you have a look at your stamina bar, you spent stamina from defending. That's not usually the case. So it's it's kind of in place to stop you abusing it. But um, as the Conqueror, I personally wouldn't recommend using it very much um, because of the stamina cost and the fact that your blocks are actually very potent as they are. Mm. Um, it's not much use because you lose the superior block property. And superior block property is um, is something unique to the wall uh, to the Conqueror. Uh, the Warlord has it in very specific circumstances. But basically what it means is against any character, if you hit them with a light attack and they block it, that's the end of your chain. So if I'm doing a combo and then I hit him with a, or I get blocked with the light attack, that's the end of the chain. I can't complete it anymore. Right. Um, with every other character, if you hit them with a heavy attack, but they block it, you can continue the combo. Whatever combo it is, it will carry on the same regardless. You won't get staggered. Um, but the Conqueror's superior block means even if you're hit with a heavy, heavy attack and you block it, uh, that will stop the chain, so they can't do anything. They cannot continue. Ah, I see. Okay. So but the superior block from... only works for the Conqueror. Yes, it's the superior block. It's listed as one of his stats on his move set. If you have a look on the left side, it says superior block. Blocks interrupt heavy attacks as well as light attacks, and opponents cannot chain after being blocked. Um, but aside from defensively, you can actually use the shield offensively which is much cooler in my opinion, hmm. uh, in the form of a shield bash. Oh yeah, that shield bash, we had that earlier, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you can just sort of throw that out into guaranteed damage, in fact. So this is a light attack which is guaranteed after you hit with a shield bash? Yeah, so if you, um, the shield bash itself, you'll notice it flashes orange, it is unblockable, uh, but it can be avoided by somebody who's quick on their toes, though it is quite hard to do. Um, you could also chain it into heavy attacks. But yeah, that's basically all you can do with your shield. I mean, there are some nuances to the Conqueror's block in that um, you can get free guard breaks from blocking quite a large range of attacks. Oh, really? Yeah, so ordinarily, um, I think somebody's drawn up a list somewhere, but uh, if you block an attack... Um, you have time to sort of guard break the opponent, but they can also just cancel out the guard break if they're you know quick on their toes if they hit the guard break button themselves. With the conqueror, you cannot respond. A lot of most heavy attacks in the game, if you manage to block them, you can get a guard break that the opponent can't do anything about, which makes him very potent defensively uh, and sort of reduces that need to parry that everybody else has. Because you can get that free guard break off of just because a block Because you can get that free guard break, exactly. So you can punish regardless. Hmm. Okay, so we've kind of seen the basics and, you know, you've shown us the defense and, you know, just what the shield can do. But I'm still kind of interested about the shield bash. Like, is there a lot that you can do with that? Because I feel that it's a pretty potent attack. Okay, so you remember earlier I said... A criticism of the Conqueror is that he's not very variable. He's not very, doesn't have a lot of tricks up his sleeve. And I said that was true. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it is for the most part. But at, or earlier in the video, I also said he's horrendously overpowered. And um, the shield bash is it. The shield bash is why. And um, I'll show you why. Okay. Basically, you're, you're making you... me really interested now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of players don't abuse the shield bash to its its fullest extent they think it's sort of a bit of a gimmick they'll use it occasionally you might see it get thrown out and they won't really abuse its real strengths now i'm going to change shield bashes on you and okay. i want you to take a look at your stamina and my stamina now, oh you're wow. already at half stamina yeah wow you haven't even and i'm nearly full yeah you barely break a sweat and i'm just about yes. to keel over now that severely limits the opponent's options for aggression on you because if they get too low on stamina 
they either have to dodge your shield bashes to get their stamina back, or you can just shield bash them back into exhaustion state, and that is absolutely lethal. If that you hit me, no if you hit me with the shield bash mm -hmm. while my stamina is down, do mm -hmm. I get knocked over? You don't get knocked over by that, but there is a circumstance where I can basically 50-50 you into a knockdown, and okay. there's nothing you can do about it, which I'll show you. It's also to do with the shield, funnily enough. All, all right. I am not just interested, but also very scared now, so go <laughs> ahead. And rightly you should be. Um, <laughs> the Conqueror can really abuse this, and it's very, very difficult to counter. Um, the only way to stop the shield bash is to dodge it at very specific times. Um, specifically, you'll notice that I dodge before I do the shield bash. Yeah. Because it comes off, you can do it off either off a sideways dodge or a forward dodge. And um, if you want to punish the attack, you have to start then. You have to start when the dodge happens. If you want to dodge it, that's your window of opportunity, which allows me to do things. If you start trying to dodge the attack, okay. I can just guard break. If you try to dodge too early, I can just guard break you out of the dodge. And then I've got a free guard break. So you can force people into these 50-50 situations where they either get shield bashed and then they take the guaranteed light damage or they get guard broken and then they take a guaranteed heavy. And you'll notice then you even dodged it, but I still yeah. hit you yeah. because you dodged into the terrain. The shield bash actually ignores most iframes with one exception of a specific part of the Nabushi's hidden stance. But it means if you get somebody into a corner, they are just screwed. There is very little they can do to get out until they accidentally sort of get pushed out by your shield bash. <laughs> so this whole time they've probably eaten a chunk of stamina damage and um, God knows how many light attacks. Um, so but you, you'll notice... You Sorry. mentioned earlier that you can actually do like an infinite shield bash kind of on me? Yes, with the heavy attack. You can chain heavier attacks into shield bashes. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, you see a lot of players, they'll try and exploit this specifically, but um, try and block the heavy attack, which you usually can do. I'll get you away from the wall, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Oh, you know, yeah. you can actually block that. Yeah. It is preventable, um, except for in one circumstance. So if you get over back by the wall, my friend, I'm sure you'll enjoy this. <laughs> of, of course. I always love yeah. to be backed up but to a wall by spiky armored men. So if you're chaining the flail or the uh, the heavy attack into the shield bash, you can actually hit people into the wall and stagger them like you could with you know like a regular guard break. So a regular guard break, you just throw them into the wall and um, they get yeah, staggered they like that. Stagger, yeah, yeah. You can actually do it with the shield bash if it's been chained off of something else. So typically, what you'll try and do is be defensive, get an opening with a with a block or a parry. And then do the guard break. Now, after the guard break, you can actually heavy attack. <laughs> if you don't the hit the wall, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can uh, you can guarantee that heavy attack, like I said earlier. And then off of that, you can chain it into a shield bash, which you can chain into a heavy, which you can chain into a shield bash. And so long as they hit the wall from the shield bash, you are guaranteed a heavy attack. Oh god! So I can just keep you there. I'm just all being flung around until... here, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I can keep you there all day until I run out of stamina, or uh, I hit you with a shield bash that pushes you away from the wall. And, and I literally, I literally cannot attack. block or parry that heavy after the yes. shield right? Correct. You cannot, you cannot do a thing. That is crazy. Now, I mentioned before, I can punish you. Uh, with a 50-50. Now, you're out of stamina there. Yeah, let me um, get that back. Yeah, All right. so, uh, I mean, I'm going to take it off you again in a moment. <laughs> oh, how nice of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, if the opponent's out of stamina, what everybody wants to do is guard break and throw, because yeah, it knocks sure. them down, it guarantees you a heavy attack, uh, and it pauses their stamina uh, regeneration for the duration. Now, most people will just be on their guard against that. They'll, they will take no offensive actions. They will not do any defensive actions except for blocking and uh, guard breaking. Or counter guard breaking. Because that's, right. that's the punishment if they get it wrong. Um, what you can do with the Conqueror, and sorry to just keep shield bashing you here, but I'm no, going to prove the point. It's fine. 
is um, you have a sprinting attack. Oh boy! Oh, and that Which knocks does you down. The same thing. Yeah, it knocks you down. Even if you're not out of stamina, it will knock you down. Oh, I see. Okay. But, um, typically, if you start sprinting towards somebody, they'll just throw a light attack at you because it'll knock you out. Um, you won't be locked on. You'll be sort of at their mercy. So if I try to do it and you just throw a light attack at me, you'll just hit me out of it. Oh, yeah, I see. If you get it early enough, yeah. The Conqueror is quite a bad example to try and do it with because his light attacks are quite short range. Uh, but a lot of things like the Nobushi in particular, the Warden, the Orochi, um, they'll just hit you straight up and you'll, you'll get punished severely for it. But when you're out of stamina, um, you can't do that. Your light attacks are too slow. Yeah. So what you can do as the Conqueror and really punish people who are out of stamina and they're, they're taking all your guard breaks and you think, what can I do? You can just sprint at them and do the charging attack. So you can't they've got it. one option to defend against it then, and that's a dodge. But then, what counters dodges is guard breaks. So to dodge the shield bash, you have to dodge it very late, like you just did. Yeah. So what you can do... Oh, it's just run at the... It's just lock on. Yeah, right. you just run in, yeah, lock yeah. on, guard break. So you can really, really punish that sort of out of stamina, because if they guess wrong, you get a heavy regardless. And then you can continue to punish uh, with shield bashes however you wish. When you knock me down with yes. the sprinting shield bash, mm -hmm. and I, I don't have stamina, whether you hit me into a wall or not, you're getting yes. a guaranteed heavy. Yes, 100%. If I have stamina and you knock me down, do you also get a guaranteed heavy? Yes, 100%. Oh, it's so actually slightly worse than that as well. Um, one thing I didn't show you earlier is the Conqueror can charge his heavy attacks. Right. Right, so if you do that, if you uh, just hold your... A heavy attack button. You'll see the flail flashes two different colors. So first it flashes one color and then it flashes again later on and keeps flashing. Yeah. Um, that's to indicate what sort of damage it's going to do when you hit. Um, we haven't got damage turned on here, but remember I said the Conqueror is actually listed as a heavy hitter? Yeah. This move is why, because that will take about two bars of damage. At the current patch, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. If you hit somebody with a charged heavy, which is very difficult to do, mind you, because it's so telegraphed, um, that will do a hell of a load of damage. But it is useful in certain situations, like if uh. I knock you down, I have time to charge it briefly, if it's from a uh, out of stamina. So if you're out of stamina and I manage to throw you to the ground, um, rather than having to put up with what, what I described earlier as mediocre damage, which it is, you can actually charge up that heavy. Oh, and before I can do anything, yeah. Yeah, before you can do anything. And it, it makes a significant dif difference to the amount of damage it does. Apart but, from that, is there anything else special about this charging attack? Um, defensively. You can use the charge attack defensively, which you think, well, that doesn't make any sense. It, not really, but, uh, no. Yeah, so while you're charging that attack, you can do... Basically everything that you can normally do. You can dodge, you can sort of guard break, you can shield bash. It cancels the charge, most actions do. But um, you can still block. You can do any anything like that. And there. So on his moves list it says that he has superior block in the wind-up or during the start of his heavy attacks. Um, as far as I can tell, that's not actually true. It's only true with the charging heavy. So... If I attack you from the top, if you've got your guard in the top stance, if you let it go just as I attack, you oh, instantly retaliate. I see, because I can block while doing it, I see. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you'll notice I blocked the retaliated strike. Because um, it's that slow. Yeah. yeah, but if you do it early enough, it's very tight timing, but if you do do it early enough, so if we go on three or something, like one, two, three... Oh, okay. Weird. <laughs> I let go there, but like I, I said, it's it's very tight timing. Yeah. But uh, so one, there are two, circumstances three. where if you do it early enough, you one, do hit two, them. three. There you go. And it's um, it's particularly useful against people like the Naboshi, um, because that charge attack, as far as I'm aware, is actually the the highest range ability in the game. Oh. Um, yeah. If you see the Naboshi, she likes to keep people at range. Uh, she's got a move called, I think it's Viper's Retreat, where she'll specifically sort of move backwards as she stabs forward. 
Um, oh, that this one, outranges yeah. that. Interesting, so, okay. This does so not look actually... like it has that much range. No, it, but um, if you throw it out from the side, I think it's actually quite a lot further. Uh, from the right, I Plus, guess. Plus, he, look, he looks cool as hell. He does. Yeah. Yeah, you, it's... I think it's because of the, the wide arc that it takes. It doesn't look like it has that much range, but it's, it's definitely further range than that. Um, but what's more than that, you can sort of walk in on opponents like the Naboshi while charging this with the threat that if they attack you, you're just going to block and retaliate. So if you throw your attack at me... <laughs> it just <laughs> lags through. That was yeah. just a bit of lag between us. I do it right. Yeah, throwing it now. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so you so can you counter them. You can them. retaliate, yeah. Yeah. So if you get the timing right on that, you can heavily punish people trying to keep you at range while all the while you, you kind of move in closer where you want to be. Okay, so, I mean, this shield bash is definitely crazy, and we talked about the charged heavy and everything, but I'm still kind of wondering if there's a bit more to the defense play for this class, because, I mean, there has to be even more to this shield and what he can do. And what I'm also really interested in is guard break follow-ups, because those are always really important no matter what class you play. So mm -hmm. what can what can the Conqueror do on a guard break follow-up? Okay, so uh, guard break follow-up. A lot of people think you can just get a light, but you can't. You can you can get the heavy. So you get heavy, you can chain it into shield bashes, into light attacks, into heavy attacks. If they're not so great an opponent, go for the heavy. If they are, go for the light, because it's guaranteed. Mm. Um, but basically, the reason your guard break punishes are, they're crucial to you as the Conqueror for getting damage out. Um, but it all plays into how strong your defense is. Um, I mentioned earlier that you get uh, guaranteed car breaks off of a lot, a lot of blocks. Right. Um, but there are some that you don't like. You most light attacks. You, you said that the heavy was guaranteed on my guard break. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So there's no way I can recover in time to block that, as long as it's a side heavy. Um, the top heavy, they recover in time to block it. Oh, I see. But. It does exactly the same damage anyway. Oh, okay. So you're not missing out on anything. <laughs> All right, yeah. okay, so it's side heavy as it is. On, okay. Side heavy as it is. Um, so defensively, you are... That's kind of what you want to do. You want to play the defensive role. Um, forcing people into attacking you is a lot more effective than you trying to attack them. Um, because you're guaranteed such little damage off of the shield bash it becomes kind of risky to trade with. So if you're throwing out light attacks, like, just chuck out some light attacks. If I try and shield bash into it, I'm just going to get clonked. I don't win that trade at all. Mm. So the shield bash is kind of reserved for when you want to go offensive. But defensively, that's what you want to be. You want to be sort of blocking all their attacks, blocking their heavies. Um, but the without using the all block, though. You said without like... using all block, yeah, specifically. Right, okay. Um, you don't get anything from it. It's more of an, an oh shit button when you're panicking, you're surrounded by enemies, and you need that revenge meter built, which is more of a dominion thing rather than a duel thing. But I digress. Um, so, defensively, because you get those guard breaks guaranteed off of a lot of blocked attacks, you don't have to parry very much, um, which is very useful, uh, considering that you can't faint. Now, I did say there is sort of one thing you can do instead of fainting and that's you can cancel it with your omni block oh which yeah it costs a ton of stamina um you're oh god still it does to yeah wow. uh so it's kind of an advanced trick for people who really have got your number and again you can combo that into a shield bash like basically everything else the conqueror does um but you'll still want to parry light attacks, um, especially against the Peacekeeper, because her recovery frames from having a blocked light attack are so quick you can't actually punish it unless you uh, parry her. Now the problem is, uh, you don't know if it's a light attack or a heavy attack. You don't have time to sort of judge that. You have to just go for the light attack parry. So if I'm going for these parries, what's to stop them from fainting in a heavy attack to sort of yeah. bait my parry response, you know? And, uh, as if I throw the parry, 
I can't faint it. You know, I don't have a faint button. It doesn't work. Uh, and if I go into the Omni block, they're still just going to be able to guard break me. Yeah. But what you can do, thanks to that charged attack, is you never actually have to throw the parry. So oh. if you go for a light attack, yeah, that's All right. right. I'll you go, go for a light, light attack, attack on, on, side, your, on your current side. Yep. And I miss the parry. Oh, I'm you're just charging. Just charging. Yeah. I and you also anything. blocked it at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you've still got the uh, block frames on your heavy attack. Okay, could you Which throw them at me real very... Yeah, sure. So you've got very forgiving, very forgiving parries. Ah, oh, sorry, that was just me letting go. Because you can you can mistime it. You can do the parry slightly early and you'll still block the attack and charge a heavy. Or you can do it slightly later. And you'll get a, uh, a guaranteed response. But that's one of the, one of the Conqueror's main weaknesses is people fainting you into responding with a parry or trying to respond with a parry and then when you do that that attack is gone it's out in the atmosphere ready to be parried and you've just got to sit there and think oh yeah shit. i'm, I'm out just play. gonna eat that one yeah. yeah but if you hold the heavy attack instead of just throwing it out if they fainted you which is something you can't <laughs> well you can do that with the conqueror but you you're just sitting there holding a heavy no risk to you. Yeah, and you can still block and everything. Nice. Okay. You can still block. The one thing they can do is guard break you. So, but then, because you can throw the heavy attack and become immune to the guard break, mm. all they've managed to do is get a 50 50. And it's not one in their favor either. I mean, if they manage to guard break you, they'll get a heavy. But if they miss, you'll hit them with a charged heavy, which is going to hurt more, I guarantee you. <laughs> So can you guard break people uh, or conquerors out of charging their heavy? Yes. So if while you you're are... charging it, I can guard break you? Yes, there is absolutely nothing I can do about it. Oh, I cannot take it. That's sort of the big weakness of that attack and why I don't use it very often. I see. Um, okay. It's good for zoning people, especially uh, peacekeepers, because they're forced to dodge forwards and either um, do their top lunging attack or do a guard break. Right. If you throw it as they dodge forwards, just heavy attack, or do the charged heavy, um, you'll hit them regardless. Your superior block will protect you from their uh, diving lunge. Hmm. And, um, and if you try and guard break, they'll bounce off. So you said with the guard break, if, if you get a guard break off as the Conqueror, you get a guaranteed heavy in. Yes. Now, there are some classes, like, for example, the Kensei or the Nabushi or, you know, like the Valkyrie or whatever, that uh, mm -hmm. have longer range. So when you parry them, uh, or rather when you parry their heavies, uh, they actually like get thrown back further so you don't get a guaranteed guard break follow-up because yes. you can't reach them. Uh, yeah. In that case, what would you say should a Conqueror do in that case? Okay, so the Conqueror is quite lucky in that his guard breaks are actually quite long range with their tracking. Um, most cases, uh, with the an exception of the Nabushi, which I think is actually built into the Nabushi, your the conqueror will actually leap forward uh so if you like throw out a heavy attack and i parry it you will actually look how far forward i moved right to do that guard break you were completely out of guard break range but i still hit you so against things like the kensei you will probably still land the guard break um but there are circumstances where you can't and you're right but again the conqueror comes out on top there because <laughs> during their recovery frames from the parry you can just shield bash. Oh, right. So you're now right up in their face again, right where you want to be. And you've already hit them with a light. And they've taken a chunk of stamina damage. I mean, if you go for an attack and I, I'll parry it and then uh, right, shield I'll bash I'll go you. from the top real quick. Yeah, okay. Look at your stamina. Yeah, that is... That's just yeah. gone. Yeah, that's just gone, yeah. So unless they're on full stamina... You've, you've got them dead to rights. You can then just continue to bully them however you see fit. Again, I recommend the uh, Sprint in Shield Bash, which only takes around three steps to uh, activate. To actually work. Nice. So, at this point, we've pretty much seen, I guess, the entire very respectable repertoire of moves and attacks, and especially defensive options that the mm -hmm. Conqueror has. So... 
could you give us again a little overview and your own words of what you think the conqueror playstyle is like and what you maybe believe it evolves into in the future okay so the conqueror does have a basic move set but it's it has hidden depths um but what you really want to do is a very reactive play style to how your opponent plays. Um, if you try and play aggressive into an aggressive player, it doesn't matter if they're bad or not, but they will destroy you just because you cannot trade. Uh, your light attacks don't hit very hard. Your heavy attacks don't hit very hard. And um, they can interrupt you out of your shield bash. That said, your offense against the defensive player is very strong. Because of the shield bash and its guaranteed damage and its stamina damage and just how hard you can bully people with it, um, it's very strong, very safe, as long as they are not trying to aggress back into you. So, if they start going aggressive again, you just revert to a defensive stance. Um, because again, your defense is a lot stronger than everybody else's. You can punish all sorts of things and make quite a few mistakes and get away with it because of your parry timing, because of your heavies, things like that, and because you're not insignificant health pool. It's one of the highest in the game. Um, so that's it. I mean, what I would typically do against the player I think is good is I'll just sort of spend the first 10, 20 seconds just seeing what they do. If they're being aggressive, um, I'll block and try and get any punishes that I can. If they're being defensive, I'll then revert to an aggressive playstyle where I'm starting to throw out shield bashes, trying to get the punishes that I can off of guard breaks, chaining into heavies, that sort of thing. I mean, obviously you're going to face, uh, you know, not always another conqueror like we've been doing in this video. So <laughs> you're going to face a lot of other classes. You're actually going to face 11 other classes when the full game releases. So can you give us some positive matchups for the conqueror where you when you see that class coming at you where you say okay like this is in my favor because i have tools that outplay this class pretty well okay specifically um the warlord is very very strong at the moment but as a conqueror you have quite an edge on him because of your ability to do shield bashes on the side dodge so he's got a headbutt which is very similar to this to the uh shoulder bash or the shield bash um but he can't do it on side dodges so what you can do is adopt a very reactive play style and just dodge to the side whenever he tries to headbutt or just dodge backwards out of the range of it and then punish him um other than that i'd say probably the orochi maybe the warden they're pretty easy matchups because you've got such a solid defense you don't have to respond to any of their feints really their zone attacks if you block it it's a guaranteed guard break their heavy attacks storm rush if you block it it's a guaranteed guard break they will find it very difficult to try and sort of get through your defense and punish you with anything that really matters and because you've got such a large health pool um you can afford to sort of pay that play that attrition game with them and they can't they will end up dead way before you do Okay, uh, so those are the positive matchups, but I mean, there must be some classes that give the Conqueror problems. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't say that there is. Um, because of the Conqueror's very reactive playstyle, you should be safe against most things. I mean, there are obviously worse matchups that are obviously I didn't list in the in the good matchups. Um, the Peacekeeper in particular. Uh, because her recovery frames on her light attacks are so fast, you are required to parry her if you want to get in any good damage. Um, and because she can dodge attack, um, you have to be very careful with the shield bashes. Because if she starts dodging attack at the start when you're still doing the dodge bit, she will be able to punish you with it. Um, so you have to play very smart, very defensively, and really be careful with the attacks that you're trying to parry. But apart um, from that, you'd say that pretty much as long as you're keeping your defense solid and you're using your your tools, it's not yeah. really that there's any classes where you would say, okay, this is a really unfavorable matchup for me. Yeah, there is no... I wouldn't say there's any matchup other than the Peacekeeper maybe that I'd walk into and think, right, I'm at a definite disadvantage here. Right. Um, the Nabushi is 
frustrating to play against. But if you keep your defense solid, you have good tools for getting in on her. And when you're there, keeping her down and keeping her under pressure. It's all about whether or not you have to be aggressive or defensive against certain matchups. But that's about it. There isn't a really bad matchup for the Conqueror. And that's part of why he's so strong. Because you can get guaranteed offense either either on the defense or if you're having to be aggressive, you are very, very safe. So basically what you're saying is the Conqueror can pretty much just do this all day, no, no matter who uh Yep. Just, I mean, that is my one, number one tip for a Conqueror. You have to be able to do this. <laughs> but I'll tell you how. you got to figure that out on your own. Yeah, you have to figure this out. This is the, the biggest <laughs> Conqueror trick. He's shown it to me in secret. We're not going to part with it. But I think you'll be able to figure it out. RPN, here we are already at the end of our training session. Uh, you've shown me absolutely all of the dirty, dirty secrets of the Conqueror at this part. Thank you so much for you know taking your time to show me and the viewers just what this spiky death machine can do. <laughs> no problem, my pleasure. I'm always uh, happy to dispel a few myths about the Conqueror. <laughs> Hopefully people realize now he is actually very strong. Just don't spam your attacks. You, Wait and see. You definitely showed me the power of the shield bash. Is there anything, any wisdom or any words that you would like to impart on any fledgling conquerors out there who just started playing the class? Um, the one thing I would say is just be patient. Don't go rushing in thinking you can just swing wildly and you'll get away with it. Just have a look, see what your opponent's doing and adopt a reactive play style and you'll never go wrong. Nice, nice. Very wise words. But sadly, the man may speak wise, but he has fallen into my trap because you have given me all your secrets and now you are useless to me. Be gone. But I told you how to sky hump. You can't sky hump. Goodbye.